Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ma ba'd Ahabat fillah this is the second sitting in our discussion of the treaties ala sulu thalatha or our brief study of the treaties ala sulu thalatha The Sheikh said rahmatul ali i'lam rahimakallah annahu yajibu alayna ta'allam arba masail al ula al ilm وهو معروف الله ومعروف النبي ومعروف الدين الإسلامي بالدلة والثاني العمل به والثالث الدعوة إليه والرابع صبر على أذى فيه. so he the Imam said know may Allah have mercy upon you that we must learn four basic matters the first is knowledge which is to know Allah His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم in the religion of Islam with the textual proofs or the supportive evidences and we already uh, discuss that the importance of knowledge and that the Imam defined knowledge as knowledge of Allah meaning knowledge of Tawheed and knowledge of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knowledge of the Sirah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his Sunnah Alayhi Salatu Wasallam and the religion of Islam the sciences of Islam uh, the religion of Islam though the Imam uh, what is or Better yet, we can say that the knowledge divides into that which is wajib and that which is uh, mustahab. And as far as knowledge of the deen, the knowledge that is wajib is knowledge of the wajibat, the knowledge that you need to know in order to practice your religion, in, to, in order to come closer to your Lord. Like you need knowledge of uh, tawheed. And you need knowledge of how to pray. And you need knowledge of tahara, you know, how to purify yourself. Of wudu and ghusl and haith if you're a woman, you know, uh, her menstruation. And, and all of these aspects of the religion which are going to help you practice in your daily life and do your obligatory duties. That knowledge is uh, an obligation upon you. It's not an obligation upon you to know zakat if you don't, if you're not going to ever have to pay zakat necessarily. That, you, that you're going to need to know all the ins and outs of zakat. No, that doesn't mean that you're a sinner because you don't. But the, that knowledge which you are responsible for is that which has to do with what you're going to be practicing as far as your Islam. And uh, for example, the person who's a business person, they need to know things about biur, about how to do business. That would be amongst the obligatory knowledge for that person because they need to know what's halal and what's haram to do. They need to know what, what constitutes riba. And the uh, knowledge which is mustahab or uh, extra knowledge or, or recommended knowledge or beneficial knowledge also of the sharia would be of those other aspects of the religion of knowing uh, those things which you are maybe are not obligatory upon you but to know of other aspects of the religion, to know about, uh, for example, if you, you aren't involved in trade, but to know about biur, you know, to know about trade and, and the rulings of trade and, and what constitutes riba or interest and what uh, is, uh, makes uh, transactions nullify, nullified and so forth, and other aspects of the, the knowledge. So that is... Uh, the imam here is talking about the knowledge that's wajib. You know, he said, Al-ilm huwa ma'rufat Allah, it's knowing Allah. Wa ma'rufat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And knowing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the religion of Islam with the supportive evidences. So he's talking about that obligatory knowledge that it is an obligation for every Muslim to know. Every Muslim must know uh, how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know Tawheed. Because as we demonstrated and, and illustrated, with what we um, discussed early in the prior sitting about an individual who grew up in the land of Tawheed, in the land where Tawheed is propagated throughout the schools, where this treatise, Asul al Thalatha, is learned in elementary school and, and so forth, in books and statements of Ibn al Qayyim and, and Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah and Imam Muhammad ibn Wahhab and others are learned uh, in. in uh, Secondary school and and mutawasata, you know, the the middle school and so forth. That you, you they're learning these things and learning fiqh and learning things about tawhid, and so being in an environment like that, a person doesn't have any excuse, and that shows us the importance of having 
knowledge of the evidences in order to deal with shibahat and doubtfulness. And then he said the second matter that a person needs to know, because remember he mentioned four, he said, uh, he said the second thing is practicing that knowledge. So of course, that when we gain knowledge, that we should apply it. And may Allah forgive us of our many, many, many shortcomings with regards to practicing uh, the religion. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرِ وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسُكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ فَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, he says, do you command the people, أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرِ Do you uh, command the people to do uh, righteous, righteousness? وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسُكُمْ And you forget yourselves. وَأَنْتُمْ تَطْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ And you read the book. أَفَلَا do Are you uh, a person of intellect? I mean, do you have intellectual capacity? You know, this is a, a, a very powerful statement by our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala illustrating for us the importance of practicing what we preach. Practicing what we... Uh, practicing the knowledge that we gain. So when we know something is halal and we know something is haram, that we we not just know it by our from our from an intellectual perspective, but that we put that into practice. And may Allah bless us with tawfiq and bless us with ikhlas with thabat. Uh, a thalith, then he said the third thing, a thalith, a da'wah to ilay. The third thing is calling to that knowledge. So once you gain knowledge and then you begin... Uh, you're, you're practicing that knowledge that you gained. You learn how to pray. You're practicing it. It means you're, you're guarding your salat. You're praying five times a day. You're not praying three times a day and saying, well, you know, that was enough. And I know it's an obligation to pray five. No, you're praying khamsa uh, salawat because you know uh, that it, it comes from uh, the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in ijma'al al-ummah that this is an obligation for the Muslim to do. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, uh, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said that Islam is built on five, uh, the shahada and the salat. And then he mentioned the other pillars of Islam. And as was mentioned in the hadith of Jibreel, والسلام, he said, Ya Muhammad, akhbirani al Islam. Oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu faqal, Al-Islam in Tashadin La ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah wa tuqimu salat wa tutiyu zakat wa tasawma Ramadan wa tuhajj al-bayt in istata'ata ilayhi sabil. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, responding to Jibreel alayhi salatu wa when he was asked uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about uh, the pillars of Islam, he said, he mentioned the shahada and he mentioned of course salat. Praying salat five times a day. So, that is the application of that knowledge. Is actually that we practice what we what we have gained from knowledge of Islam, and then a thalith a da'wah to ilay. Then calling to that knowledge. So if you're not practicing, and then you're trying to give da'wah, this is a very shameful and wicked thing. And and the ulama, uh, I believe Ibn Al Qayyim spoke extensively about the ulama su. Those ulama uh, and, and probably those who preceded him as well. Uh, and even from uh, authentic uh, hadith of the Prophet وسلم, illustrating, and first and foremost from the Quran as well, illustrating the importance of practicing knowledge that if you don't practice, that, you, you know, it's a painful torment for the one who knows and then they don't practice. This is the characteristic of, of those people who came before us. And the Prophet وسلم, said, Let that you will follow the way of those who came before you, that we would follow the way of those who came before you. And that means we would follow the way of the... He, when asked about who, who, who will we follow, Ya Rasulullah, men. Uh, he said, the Jews and the Christians is what they... The Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, and Majma'een, they uh, asked the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa who? And the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, responded, he said, for men, who else? Meaning, who, who else would you, you follow? You're going to follow their sunnah. And that, that's the, the, what we'd fall into. And part of their sunnah is shirk, that you would fall into 
worshiping other than Allah, even the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu shirk would come back into the Ummah. That after the tathir, that the purification uh, of, of the Sunnah, of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi there were people, people, many people who would leave the religion, and many people who would follow the Sunnah of those other nations. And you find it all the time that people make a taqlid of uh, non-Muslim holidays and customs, and uh, in the clothing and in their haircuts. This is a big problem in the land of the Muslims. You see the Mohawks now here in Saudi Arabia. So many of the youth, they wear Mohawks and they, some of them, are pure Mohawks and they weigh like, they wear their hair like the ravers, like uh, uh, looking like uh, Marilyn Manson and people like this. You know, subhanAllah, this is just gharib that you would find this in the land of Ta'id, but this is this is the reality. The Prophet ﷺ said, Let You will follow the way of those people who came before you. The Prophet ﷺ said, Men minhu. Whoever resembles a people, then he is from them. So this is a very serious thing that we practice what we preach. We practice the knowledge, we, what we gain. And then we call the people to it. We call the people to kitab illa wa sunnah to Rasul ﷺ at da'wah to ilay. And then he said the fourth thing, Arabi uh, asabra ala adafi. He said, and the fourth thing is persevering patiently through any harm that might afflict you while calling others to it. Very important that the Dawah, the Minhaj al Anbiya, is a, is a, it's a steep path. The Prophet Sallallahu and all the Anbiya, alayhim after the Salatu Wasalam, they had, uh, they were, they were punished, they were killed, they were tortured, they were persecuted by their people, they were rejected by their people, rejected by their families. And this is uh, inflicted great suffering upon them. Alayhim afdal salatu wasalam. So giving da'wah to Allah, there's always going to be people who curse you. There's going to be people who oppose you. There's going to be people who fight you. There's going to be people who call you ahla bid'ah. There's going to be people who call you ahla zandaka, who call you kuffar, who call you murtadin, who call you all kind of things. But what's very important is as we've mentioned in countless of our studies, that the proof of something is in its reality, not in what it's called. So although someone can claim something or claim something against you, it's not true unless that's true. So meaning, if someone makes takfir of you, they can't make, they, they may take takfir of you on batil, then this is batil, this hukum is batil, and of course, you are a Muslim. And likewise, if someone claims that you're from Ahl Bid'ah, be, just because they don't like your da'wah, or they don't like something you said, or they don't like who you associate with, or whatever the case may be, because this is just the nature of da'wah. Once you go out there and call people, even just the fact of having doing da'wah on the YouTube or out there, anytime you're out there, if you have a forum, there's always going to be people who oppose you, from your Muslim brothers and sisters, and from Ahl Kufr wa Ilhad as well. There's always going to be those who oppose you, and curse you, and slander you, with racism and prejudice and hatred and this is just the nature so this is why that path is uh is being patient on the 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 that path and then the imam said what the real qawluhu ta'ala wal asr inna l-insana lafi khusr illa alladheena amanu wa amalu salihati wa tawasu bil haqqi wa tawasu bil sabr then he said, he mentioned Surah Al-Asr as Dalil for this. He said, by, uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, by the time, verily man is in a loss, except those who believe and do righteous deeds and call one another to the truth and call one another to patience. Imperative, we understand that and we break this verse down. How does this reflect those uh, four things. How is this dalil? Is Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab his istilal sahih? His istinbat of this ayat? Is it sahih? And the answer is, na'am. When we look at what the Imam said, rahmatullah he said, first knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the verse, well, he said, all of mankind is in a loss. Then he made istithna. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except those who believe. And in order to believe, you have to have what? You have to have ilm. You have to have ilm. You have to have knowledge. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those who believe. So that's the dalil for knowledge. 
إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And they do righteous deeds. That's the second principle he mentioned. Application of this knowledge. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ That's the practice of that knowledge. وَتَوَاسُوا بِالْحَقِّ And calling to the haq, meaning da'wa Allah, calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَتَوَاسُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَتَوَاسُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسُوا بِالصَّبْرِ And calling to patience. And that's the fourth thing he mentioned. Was perseverance patiently through any harm. Because that's the minhaj al-anbiya. The ulama warath al-anbiya. The scholars are the inheritors of the prophets. Alayhim afdal salatu salam. Why? Because... They have to inherit, they inherit the knowledge. They didn't inherit uh, wealth, but they inherited the wealth and the protection of this religion. And they inherited the fact, the difficulties that comes along with that, that the scholars are always people criticize them and attack them. And we'll save that for the next sitting and we'll discuss further uh, a little bit more uh, reemphasizing this ayat. And the, the Imam's istanbat, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi.